as you already been absorbing, feeling, communicating, even transmitting energies, allow yourself again together to find that beautiful space where time does not exist. And you are in your soul, in your tenderness, mm. in your lovingness, in your beingness, in your pure consciousness. in the infinite that you are from source, from creative, creator of all that is, that you are part of and that is part of you in this powerful confluence of energies that we are all creating together with the assistance and the benevolence and the unconditional, unshakable love from the mountain, from the star mothers, from Telos, from your guides and angels, that live with you every moment of your life. So take that all in, in this moment, in pure presence, as you connect deeper with your breath, through your intuition, through your pineal, in the trinity of your heart, your higher mind, your mind of God. And expand your being. Allow yourself to open even more. Love yourself even more. Cognize this beautiful energy of coherence even more. Create a timeless space, a bubble in the bubble of Mount Shasta where magic happens, where healing happens, where transformation, change, desires and wishes happen. They happen now. Make it real for yourself. Make it real for yourself in a quantum state connecting to the field of all that is, of no beginning and no end. Allow yourself to go there to the space of no beginning and no end. where love is always present, supporting you, loving you, embracing you, is there for you always, always, always. Dear Shining Ones, we have not stepped far away, and we have one thing to say to you, let the mountain speak to you. Let the mountain speak to you. And this will come as it does. We have watched this in many ways. Perhaps as you are just here looking. Perhaps if you are up there hiking. Perhaps if you are finding a feather or a rock or a hearing a 
the water flowing, the mountain is speaking to you. Remember more that we are speaking to you from the mountain. We are always speaking to you from the mountain. Interdimensionally, multidimensionally, we are with you. This mountain, this beautiful node, is an amplifier. What do you want to amplify? What do you need to amplify? What do you desire to amplify in your life? That is what you tell us when you face us on the mountain. Tell us exactly. Make it real. Say it out loud. Stand with your arms stretched out, with your feet firmly planted. Talk to the mountain. Talk to us. And let the mountain talk back. Let us talk back to you. Say yes to being willing to stand in that doorway, that doorway that takes you into the energy of the star mothers, into the energy of the mountain. We are not different one than another. It is the same in different forms the dense physicality of the actual mountain is one thing. And we, in our multidimensional, etheric forms, is another kind of energy. And yet, isn't it wonderful that we're the same? That we speak one language that is echoed by the mountain. As if you had listen to different languages in your world from different countries. You hear us speaking through Meleha in the language called English. The mountain speaks a language of its own. Now, you don't need an interpreter for that. You need only to have your own personal experience or experiences if you are giving yourself a big blessing. Let us speak to you from inside the mountain. And here is something. There is no wisdom that we have that you do not already have. What do you think of that? Let us say that again. There is no wisdom that we have that you do not already have. But what you don't have yet is access to the layers where it's living. And you probably, since your awakening, have spent a lot of time peeling back those layers metaphorically. When you are here in the presence of this mountain, those layers can be blasted away. <laughs> and that may not be the most gentle thing for you. So we ask you, when you stand and face the mountain, or before you go to sleep, when you bring it into your conscious awareness, because we know that before you leave, you will have an indelible picture of the mountain in your memory. <clears throat> that you have a conversation with us from the mountain. While you are here, especially, speak to the mountain before you go to sleep and before you rise. There will be an answer. There is always an answer. And there is always love. This indelible imprint comes from your connection to your Lemurian Akash. And no one can change that. Why would you? No one can change it for you. 
This is a gift. This Lemurian Akash that you carry connects you to the voice of us, connects you to the voice of the mountain, connects you all to that place inside that remembers. You will not be surprised because we're warning you. Don't be surprised if you hear us talking back. Don't be surprised when you hear the mountain talking back to you, reminding you of your own wisdom, of who you are, why you're here, what you leave behind, and then, most importantly, what you take away. So we ask you now to put your hands on your heart and feel the gifts of the mountain inside of your heart. Just know that it is their trust that they are there. Breathe. And be grateful. Each breath being a yes to receiving, to acknowledging the gifts of who you are and why you are here. And for now, we step back. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. You're opening a portal here. And this particular portal belongs to you. It will close when you leave. And this is the new kind of portal that exists on this planet. Because the ones that you counted on, that the planet created, are starting to move. They're going to move into places that are needed for the planet, not for you. You are now in a situation where you start making sense of what I will call senseless things. Now, I'm going to go slow. But even before I do this, the portal is being created right now by you, not on the mountain, but in this room. That is that what I would call consciousness, sacred consciousness, coming together in coherence, which changes things bigger than each one of you, because collectively you're on board with it. So in this, in this portal, in this moment, I want to explain something to you that may make the difference. Esoterics are very difficult for three-dimensional human beings. Very difficult. If you left this, this entire conference and you went home and your next door neighbor came over and they said, well, what happened? And you said, it was wonderful. I was listening to the voice of the mountain. And they say, well, what did the mountain say? And they said, I have no idea. I don't know what a mountain sounds like. <laughs> That's typical. It's fine while you're here to talk about these things. And when you leave, they're gone. The esoterics of it often gets in the way of the practicalness of it. What has to happen next as you sit here in this portal? is cognizing an understanding of what is going on. Putting it in your lap that you can feel or sense or expect. And that's why I'm here. What must occur between that multidimensional energy of the mountain, the star mothers, your soul, and the three-dimensional information that you have that is your survival, that you walk day to day, your culture, all these things. What has to happen is a meld. There must be some way that you receive in a way that you can cognize instead of waiting for the voice in a mountain, which you have no idea what that might sound like or how it might work. So let's start simple and easy. What is it that the star mothers want to give to you? There could be a list and from the top of it is 
belief that they're there. That's number one. Even if you don't understand how it is they might communicate, or any guide or angel might communicate, there has to be an understanding in your heart, in your mind, of belief. And my partner went over that this morning. You can't pretend to believe. You can't say, well, I'll pretend to believe, and, and then if it, if it happens, I'll believe. You have to believe. And that's going to happen through this portal. This portal is set right now for you to feel the love of the Creator in this moment. For allowance of understanding through a metaphor that I'm going to create that you will understand. How does spirit talk to you? How do the star mothers talk to you? And if they were talking, what would they say? The training is going to be done by the humans, not the star mothers. The star mothers are done with school. It's those who are here now on purpose for the training who will give you the core spiritual truths, the shamanic trainings, the schooling. So what are the star mothers here for, you might ask. I'll tell you, they're here to enhance your lives through one thing, intuition. 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 And you wonder why there are more women here than men. Because women have intuition first, the men get it later. Those protectors of your lives, women, they are the ones who will make it possible and lay the groundwork and love you enough so that you can then relax and have peace with the survival in your family so you can do the intuitive work with the children, with everything else. This is the way it is practiced in so many indigenous places, including Lemuria. Women are designed for intuition for love, for kindness. They're the ones who have to have all of that to raise their children and more. The women originally started out as the shamans and then lost that through history and now it is starting to return in a loving way, in a beautiful way where the world will start seeing who does it better and will say, I want a woman for my priest. I want a woman for my pastor. I want a woman for my shaman. Intuition is the key. And I'm going to give you a sample through a metaphor that all of you will understand of what that's like. There are those who will say, well, I'm going to use my intuition and wait for a star mother to use my intuition, and I don't know what I'm talking about. Because I don't know what it feels like when a star mother uses my intuition. For centuries and beyond, eons, men and women have been taking to the oceans of this earth. And no more profoundly metaphoric is that I can give you other than this what I'm going to give you right now. And that is the operation of a sailing ship. Imagine the sailing ship is there in the water and it's complete. There's nothing missing. And what propels it is wind. So imagine for a moment the sailing ship is there and there is no wind. That perhaps might be you right now sitting there wondering while I'm waiting for something from the mountain. Now again, back to your neighbor who says, well, what's it like there? And what, what happens? And what were you waiting for? And you would say, well, I can't really see it. It's not there. It's invisible. But I know it's coming. That's the kind of talk that a three-dimensional person who doesn't understand any of this will then take. And it's, it's, it's evidence for them that you're a little crazy. 
So let's ask a sailor, what are you waiting for? And the sailor will say, I'm waiting for something invisible. Well, when's it coming? It's coming when it comes. And what is it will happen? And the sailor will say, it will propel my ship forward. And then you'll say, well, what happens when your ship propels forward? You'll say, then I can use my rudder. Are you getting this? Intuition becomes the invisible wind of the sail in your life that guides your direction of what happens next. But it's complicated. You have to be aware of the wind. And the more it blows, the more the sailor feels what it's doing to the ship. It blows from this side or that side or this direction or that direction. And what happens next to the sailor? It affects which direction you go to capture the wind. You know that. Well, some will say, well, what if I want to go in one direction and the wind is coming from another? Ask a sailor what you do. You tack. You go left. You go right. You come about. The wind fills the sails. And you go and you go and you go. But what it does to you, it makes you go left or it makes you go right. Welcome to intuition. Intuition will start blowing into your life and it won't sound like the mountain. And it won't sound like a star mother. It's going to feel like guidance and love. Because suddenly there's peace in what you're doing. Which direction you're going. And it will force you through intuition to probably turn left or right when you wanted to go straight. And let's say you have to go left. And you want to go left a little bit out of the way because you were going that way, but the wind is blowing this way. And you go left, and suddenly you meet somebody who has a solution. Are you getting this? The wind made you change the rudder. The rudder changed the ship. The ship then runs into a beautiful scenario that you didn't even know you needed. That's love. That's the star mother. That's the invisibility of spirit and how it works with those who want to study intuition. Do you know what channeling is? A constant stream of intuition. It is. The channeler hooks in to the other side of the veil just long enough to feel the wind. And that then gives them the messages, the directions. And then it's a translation they do, like you're hearing now, and they deliver it. So a channeler is one who has intuition in the right place for that ship of channeling. Imagine for a moment, you're really headed in a certain direction. You have to be there at the right time. And along comes the wind. And it blows you off course in a very gentle way saying, okay, I don't know why, but I've got to turn right. And you come about, so your sails are facing the wind, they fill, and off you go to the right, knowing that you're going to have to come back to the left eventually. And you do all that. And then the wind changes, you come back, and you tack a little, and you finally end up at your destination, only to find out you missed an accident. You see, if you'd gone straight, you'd been in the middle of it. But you had intuition because the wind came up from another direction. This is the metaphor. A beautiful scenario that promises through the love of the creator, through the star mothers or the guides or the angels or anything you want to say, that kicks in when you are able to feel it and want to feel it. So many of you living in 3D, 4D, whatever you want to call it, are expecting three-dimensional answers. And that's not the way it works. It's a meld so that interdimensional things, multidimensional things, can fill your sails. You've got to be aware. This is why there are so many more women who are studying this than men at the moment. At the moment. This will change. To include the men in a way that is just like it used to be. Full support of what the women do best. Men are not chomping at the bit to have children. 
to give birth. They don't want anything and they're not equipped. So right then I'm in trouble because I have made a demarcation between the sexes. And that's not appropriate in this culture. Don't say that, Cryon, we're all the same. No, you're not. The men are specialists in what they do. The women are specialists in what they do. They come together and complement one another. And they move forward. But the women are trusted more for their intuitive senses of which way the wind is blowing. How much wind will there be? If you really get good at it, startling things start to happen. Anticipation of things that you don't know are coming. How does that work? It does work. You feel the wind come up. Here it goes. I'm going left. I didn't want to go left. That means something's going to happen. And so now you are waiting for it. I expect this. I expect this. I expect this. There it is. Things that you may not think are possible start to drop in your lap. It, it, it defies economics. It defies the consciousness of what the government says. It defies all the things that you've been told happen a certain way just because they do. And you're sitting there voiding it all because you've got wind in your sails. And others don't. Don't you wish they could? What would happen if this planet started to understand that? This is what comes from the Creator and the love. What would Earth be like if everyone sensed that wind just a little bit and started steering a course like this? What would it be like? Three words. Peace on Earth. Coherence. It's already started. Something happened just recently. Did you catch it? There were those who wanted war. And the earth didn't. Did you catch that? That's a first. Your grandfathers, your grandfather's grandfathers, all had alliances which stuck together between countries. And when war started, they all joined the war. That's the way it worked. Go look. Check history. And suddenly, this time, it didn't. Dear ones, welcome to the shift. You just saw it. This is new on the planet. And it had nothing to do with any of them attending a meeting like this or changing their religion. All it felt was that a little wind filled the sails of integrity and beauty and kindness. And this is not what this earth wants, ever. You got to see it. That is what I am teaching you now. Don't go from this place expecting voices from the air or visions. Expect something a lot more practical, a feeling of intuition that will then guide you to go a certain direction. A mother sits in her bed with an infant in the other room. She's had a big, a big long day and she's, she's done a lot of work. And the baby is there and she is there and she's sighing. And she's about ready to go to sleep when she awakens and says something is wrong. She gets up and immediately goes to the, to, the, to the crib in the other room where the infant is sleeping and realizes the infant's in trouble. It has turned the wrong way. It is breathing improperly. She, she writes it and, and the infant takes a a breath and goes back to sleep. What just happened? What just happened was the wind filled her sails and woke her up, perhaps, and took her to the place she should be where she might have even saved a life. That's the shift. That's what's going on with the star mothers, with spirit, with guides, with angels, with you in this portal. What's next for you in your life? What decisions do you have to make that you ponder right now? And you, you don't know which way to go. I could go here, I could go there, I could do this, I could do that, I'm not really sure which way. I want you to sit and smile and relax and wait for the wind to fill your sails. 
And that is the way so many in this, in this place have already been because they've discovered it works. This is the meld that bridges the gap between the esoteric, the multidimensional, and the practical. This is how what you have developed in belief will then filter in to guiding your life. Put your hands on the tiller of which direction to go and sense the wind. Sailors are so good at this they can look over the, the water and they can see the ripples of where the wind is shifting and actually turn their sails before the wind shifts. And that's another story, perhaps for another time. But that's when you get so melded with spirit that you become much more attuned and in sync and entrained with the other side of the veil. I'm crying in love with humanity. Let the wind guide you from here. And so it is. Hi everybody, thanks for watching this. I wanted to tell you this is a little time sensitive. Greetings again, dear ones. <laughs> for the last few channels, we have been talking to you about something that is consciousness but physics, and it has to do with the multidimensionality of you, your cellular structure, your consciousness, and how you're moving paradigms from one reality to another. And so we want to enhance that yet today. Again, the channel is not about physics, it's about consciousness, it's about you. It's about what's coming. Now yet again, I want to ask you to readjust your reality in the room. This is a message from Spirit. It's a benevolent message, a beautiful one to the creative source that loves you. The creative source has a higher consciousness, you might say, than anything that you can even fathom. There is no room for darkness. Love is the king of emotions for you. It is also the benevolence of God. There is no other, no other energy that surpasses it. It, it is prevalent throughout physics, throughout the universe. There'll come a day when science will expect benevolent return from experiments. That intuition will show them something to do and there will be no question of what the experiment's results will be. They'll feel the benevolence before they even experiment. That the scientific method will be something that qualifies something that they already know, not that they suspect. It's all part of what's coming. We gave you channels in the past, especially the last three, that were interrupted by a translator. And so we wish to repeat some of it so that there is no interruption and in a language and word frame that is more consistent without translation. I want to talk about one of your famous scientists. Once again, it's Einstein. Einstein actually quarreled with quantum physicists in later years. Einstein did not believe in potentials. <laughs> Einstein was more empirical. And yet, I am telling you that this man was the first quantum physicist. And we do this by saying what he did was to show you that something you thought was absolutely steady and empirical and would not be changeable was changeable. So in physics, especially that which you walk around in and call reality, there are certain things that behave certain ways 
and they're not changeable. They can't be. It's, it wouldn't be your reality if they changed. And Einstein came along and showed you one of the most stable things that you believe planetarily was changeable. When Einstein showed his theory of relativity, it was about time. It was about something so empirical, so steady for you, that you can measure time by the nanosecond. You've worked out ways of, of cutting time so that it is, it is so precise, you know, by the, by the absolute piece of it, what time it is. Because it never changes. But it did. Einstein presented something that I'm going to turn right around and show you is yours. He postulated that if a man got in a spaceship and went the speed of light and he stayed out for perhaps a year going the speed of light and returned to the planet, he would be a year older and the planet would have aged more than he did. So by going very fast, he slowed down his time relative to where he came from. Now he didn't know that, and neither did Earth, until they met together, and then it was obvious. This rewrote the whole idea that something you thought was never going to change was variable. Now I want you to just stop right there. That's quantum physics. Because it's going to rewrite what you think cannot be changed. Let's get back to the speed relationship to time. In three dimensions, in the thinking process that you have, even in four dimensions, you linearize everything. It has to be that way for you. It has to make sense for a human being. So speed to you is defined as the, as the amount of duration between points. If you're driving a fast car, the duration will be shorter from A to B. An airplane, shorter from A to B. You go faster, the duration is shorter. And every time you mention speed, it's in a straight line. Now let me give you some what I call sideways logic. Could you go as fast in a circle? The answer is yes. Ignore that which you think is centrifugal force, which is not, not defined right. If you were to go in a circle instead of a straight line, could you still go fast? Of course. So now let's go very fast in a circle instead of a straight line. You have that picture in your mind. Now let's start to reduce the circle. And reduce and reduce and reduce and reduce and reduce until the circle is your cellular structure. You've heard the term vibrating at a higher level. A vibration to you is an oscillation. A back and forth mo motion. It's not. It's a circle. <laughs> You are vibrating in a circle, and in this energy becoming multidimensional, your cellular structure is speeding up. Are you starting to get a picture? What would happen if your cellular structure started to speed up a lot more than someone else's? Using the theory of relativity in its purest form, ignoring some of the speed limits that Einstein has put there, can you see it would be possible for your clock to slow down and everyone around you is going faster? This results in a much 
longer lifespan, dear one. I just gave you the quantum reason why a high vibrating soul will live longer. It's because you change time with your consciousness. Now I've done this so that you can relate to what you already know. So it's not some high idea in metaphysics that has no grounding to it. Einstein showed it to you. But you're doing it at a cellular level. I'm going to give you a piece of information that I've never revealed before that is going to be on the planet and known shortly. Inventors are starting to move into a multi-dimensional reality. Even if they don't know it, they're starting to use some principles that are multi-dimensional. Now let me give you a paradigm that you are used to. And that is this. Everything that works, that is mechanical, has to have a power supply. It really boils down to fire. There has to be fire. Heat is often needed, whether it's in steam or another way, in order to propel something, fire equals light. Fire equals computing. Fire equals this, that. It all boils down to the elements of the planet fueling something you have created. Now you'll get really good at efficient use of fire. That's, that is a metaphor. But it still has to have a power supply. So the paradigm that I'm giving you is that in 3D, in order to have something that would appear to be energy, you have to have that which starts it somehow. A little or a lot. That is the paradigm of three dimensions. It has to come from something that is in front of you in order to develop it into something else and you're getting as I say very good what about quantum energy quantum energy is not linear now if I told you it didn't need a power supply I would be wrong but let me tell you this it does not need a three-dimensional power supply here is an axiom that the quantum physicists and inventors will know in order to have quantum energy to work with it to develop it to use it there has to be a quantum source period you cannot create quantum energy or build anything using it without a source that is similar of quantumness. Let me define the word quantum. As we use it today, it means multidimensional. It is not the standard definition of quantum as physics would have. We are using it differently. It means multidimensional. Multidimensional energy of any form that is developed on this planet must have a multidimensional source. They're even going to call it a push pull energy. Because when they realize the dynamics of multidimensionality, it's going to work in a push pull way. In linearity, one power supply simply pushes in one direction to fuel something that then does something. There's no push-pull. The closest push-pull energy you have was developed through a quantum mind called alternating current. And that is push-pull. If there's an en engineer in the room, you will chuckle because you know I'm right. You look at the phase relationships of alternating current and it's push-pull. Tesla knew about this and it wasn't time. A quantum energy needs a quantum source. Now, before we go to the next step, 
where would you get a quantum energy? Do you know there are quantum biologists? If there are quantum biologists, that tells you something about your biology. What if it were quantum? There are quantum sources all over the planet. Some of the biggest, the, the, the absolute largest energies on this planet sit there and look at you and work 24-7 and they're quantum. Gravity is quantum. Magnetics is quantum. Light is quantum. The sources of quantum energy and development are with those three. Plus one, you. If you have a quantum biology, that means that you can do quantum things. The source is inside your DNA. Now this is what has created the ability for you to vibrate faster with consciousness. Do you know that if you vibrate fast enough, and your consciousness is high enough and you can integrate with the creative source what happens? your DNA starts to work at a very efficient level you go past 44, 55, you get into 80s and 90s and this now will explain something very controversial the masters of this planet had vibrating DNA in the 90s and they controlled physics they could change one thing into another they could work with life force they could make massless objects and they can do it because they are one with that which is around them with a fast high vibrating DNA the quantum engine is already there inside you and this explains why this new energy and the magnetic field is able to allow you to go further than you've ever gone before a quantum engine which is your biology will create quantum thought higher thinking inventions because you think out of 3D many of you will outlive your families there'll come a time when humanity looks at the few who are out outliving the many and you will again face the objection that you're using magic not understanding that what you're using is the love of God it's always been there this is just one of many things that we'd love to share more with you but if I wanted to summarize this portion of the message it would be this everything that you wish to accomplish personally within you can be done using a quantum engine that is already in place and waiting to be started the consciousness of thought the emotions of love benevolence and compassion are catalysts for the quantum engine would you like me to say that again the attributes of love compassion and benevolence are the catalysts for the quantum engine that's what starts it fear will stop it it creates a higher vibrating human being just like Einstein said you surpass some of the attributes of physics as you know them when you start to vibrate higher did you know that disease is a lower vibration did you know that if your cellular structure vibrates higher a lower vibrating disease cannot remain am I getting through it's physics it's the physics of consciousness 
Interesting, isn't it? That of all the inventions that you're going to have in these next decades, of the quantum things that are going to occur, the one that you will use first is within you. Because you have to kickstart that one in order to have the others. Because these are going to come out of high consciousness thinking. And that is going to create engrams and patterns of thought that are going to connect to a universal source that gives you perfect physics, not limited physics as you live in. The inventions are in you, waiting to be connected to the source that created them. I want to give you something to think about. I want to paint a picture of a quantum source that is all over this planet. Einstein showed you you could change time. It was basic. It's been proven. I'm going to tell you something. In real physics, not limited physics, not 3D physics, in real physics, are you ready? Everything can be changed. It's a complete, beautiful, variable system that you can change. When you learn about what it is and how to use it, and you develop the inventions and the machinery, if we can use that word, you will also have some other revelations. Machinery could be partly biological. I'm going to leave that alone. But here's what I want to tell you. What do physicists tell you about matter? They tell you it's mostly space. It's empty. I have two examples I want to give you that are outside of the box of your limited physics. Here you have a rock and the rock weighs a certain amount. It always weighs that. Of course it does. You can't change that. The rock is the rock. What if I told you you could change that? If you go inside a rock at the, at the atomic level, it's mostly space. That means there's plenty of room to change the density that makes the rock weigh what it does. Dear ones, why does gold and lead for a certain size weigh more than, than basalt or, or some other light rock or a sponge? <laughs> and the answer is density. So if you can molecularly, atomically change the density of the rock, you can change what it weighs. Now, if the rock is mostly space, you've got plenty of room. If you knew how to do it. By the way, Tesla did. Tesla is back, by the way. This will occur to humanity. When quantum energies are used, you can change quantum rules. If you change the density of the rock, you could make it massless. You can make it float. That's all you have to do. Dear ones, it's simply variable physics that in your box you don't think you can change. You didn't think you could change time either, did you? And that was in the 40s. It's going to happen. Imagine for a moment if you could, if you could change the weight of things. And you could do it easily through a quantum source, not a big power supply, forget that. And what source might you use to change the density of matter? Turn the page. You're sitting there and you have something I want you to do figuratively in this example. <laughs> I want you to pretend for a moment that you're in front of a very powerful magnet. It's actually not a magnet, it's a pair, plus and minus. 
It's one of those special magnets that is, it's, it's so difficult to pry it apart. Because the plus and the minus are aligned, so they're sticking together. It's not very big either, in fact, it's, it's, not, even, it's not even two inches. It's small. There's no power supply. It's simply two magnets that are known to be extremely strong. They're dense. They have properties of magnetism highest on the planet ever discovered and they're sticking together. They're small. Your job is to pull them apart. So you begin. You grasp them and you stop for a moment realizing they're not going to come apart easily. So you take a stance of a weightlifter. You bend down you get your muscles prepared you grab each part and you start to pull and it's tough it's not coming apart they're stuck together through a magnetism that is so strong you know if you slide them slightly to one way or another they might come apart you have to be careful if they come apart and you get your finger in between you'll squash it and you start to sweat. Now you're extending energy. You're expending energy. You're extending your consciousness to everything you can to pull these parts from one another. Now I want you to freeze frame that for a moment. I want you to get that picture firmly in your mind. You're doing everything you can. You're breathing hard. You're huffing and puffing. You're sweating. The magnet will eventually come apart with the force that you're using as a human being. But I want you to freeze frame it. Because this, my friend, is the difference between 3D energy and quantum. The human being is a machine that's 3D in this particular example trying everything it can through force to pull something apart if you do it long enough you'll get tired if you do it long enough you're going to need fuel you're going to need to eat something in order to sustain your life so you can use your muscles so you can continue to pull apart this magnet if it were life and death that you had to pull it apart to survive, you'd also add anxiety. <laughs> then you'd have to eat more. Now let's turn over and look at what the magnet is doing. Nothing. What kind of force is 24-7? The magnet has incredible power. So much so you're sweating to try to pull it apart. And it's doing nothing. It's just sitting there. Long after you're tired, it's still powerful. Dear ones, long after you're dead, it's still there. It's still powerful. Never ending. It doesn't need to be fed. It's forever. How can you explain that? What kind of a power is there? There's no power supply. There's no electricity only magnetism I just gave you the key for massless objects it's gonna come from a quantum source the quantum source will be magnetism magnets get their power from a quantum source that does not appear to be on the planet it's everywhere it's part of the ethers of the heliosphere of the sun. It is part of the, the ever-present ethos of the space between atomic structure. Magnetism and the power of it comes from a source that you cannot explain because it's not linear. How many physicists have looked at the power of magnets and scratched their head? You know how to use them. You have no idea where the source is coming from. 
and you huff and you puff and you use all of that 3D energy that has to be fueled in order to pull them apart or push them and they're forever and they don't care and they don't get tired. <laughs> Welcome to the future. There is so much energy available without a 3D power supply and this will be the new frontier. When you can do these kinds of things and not weaponize them, that's high consciousness. It's coming. It's enough for today to give you examples of what high consciousness can do. Where you're headed for because there is a connection to the creative source which is going to open up and give you the benevolence that you deserve. These things will not be given completely while the earth is in its current state of unbalance. These things will clear and the unbalance will become less and you will feel it and you will know it and there will come a day when there is very very little killing on this planet and much more understanding on this planet and when you can see that it will simply open the frontiers of physics and like the magnet that is forever it will create for you food and water and power and even you think that's enough you're in the forerunning forerunners of all of it all of it planet after planet has been through this it's coming and you will say cry and it's going to be in my lifetime and I'm going to tell you of course of course you may look a little different but you'll be alive you're going to be here to see it all of it that's because you're an old soul you paid the price to get here with lifetime after lifetime of working with light dear ones now it's time the light gives it back to you and so it is